Ugh. So a little while back, I did a comparison between a cheap camera bag and a more expensive name brand camera bag like Wander or Peak. That's what I'm considering name brand. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity. I was given this cheap, like $40, under $50 Amazon daily carry bag from a company called Sitan. Sitan, never heard of them. Um, very basic, very general camera bag. And I thought this would be a good opportunity to do another comparison of what it's like to have a cheap daily carry bag compared to a more expensive name brand daily carry bag. So I guess you could call this cheap versus expensive episode two. Okay, so here's the thing, right? I was gonna pack this bag out and kind of show you how I would keep my daily carry items in here and everything. Um, it's not a bag I planned to really use. It was a bag that I got um, as like an example so I could sketch some things for a bag that I'm helping design with a company. Um, and I was like, you know what, let me try using this for a little bit and see and see what happens. And here's the thing, I'm gonna say this right off the top. If you're thinking about getting a cheap camera bag or a cheap daily carry bag, right? For like from Amazon for like under 50 bucks because you're like, well, I just need something really simple to put like my books in or you know take to the office or take to the gym or whatever. I would say be careful because just in the couple days that I tried using this, everything on it failed. Um, there's not really a lot of redeeming stuff I found on this bag that wouldn't be worth paying the extra 100 or even $50 for a bag like the Boundary Supply Renin or the two I have right here that I was gonna show you, the Able Carry Day Pack and the Manal Carry on uh, Daily Carry 3.0. Those are like my three that I use probably the most for daily carry items because here's the thing, if you're gonna use this for anything that's from like your house to work, your house to work to the gym, maybe your house to the gym, any kind of those like little scenarios that you might be using it for, a lot of the hardware on this is extremely cheap. Not just does it feel cheap, cause there's some bags, there's some name brand bags where I'm like the hardware feels a little cheap, but it's not. This feels, acts, and is very cheap. Um, so much to them where the zippers don't always stay zipped. I have closed things, some zippers on this bag to have them pop back up like pop back open. Like they didn't close properly. We have to unzip it and zip it again. They feel very clunky. They feel like they constantly need to be broken in, but they're never going to be. They have that like sticky feeling. Whereas like there's resistance to it no matter what, especially going around the curves of this bag. I noticed personally that they just don't, they don't feel right. And I understand this is only one of the plethora of cheap daily carry bags that are on Amazon. And there's might be a couple in there that are hidden gems. But my general assumption right at the top before I show you or talk about anything any further is I would invest in a little bit more of an expensive bag. I would go with something that has those YKK zippers, maybe that Kodora or maybe that Kodra or that tarpaulin material, something that's gonna last a little bit longer. Because one of the things that I've noticed in the bags that I use for daily carry, right, is this one is the Able Carry, right? It's got X-Pack, so it's extremely weather resistant, weather guard zips, the whole, whole shebang shabattle. But this bag is the daily 3.0 from a null. And the thing is, I took this in a snowstorm with no rain fly, doesn't have weather guard zips. This material does not feel like it should last very well in any kind of elements. And it lasted the entire five hour hike in the elements. It's actually the bag that I'm wearing in my intro where I'm walking through the snow and the snow is falling. No, nothing on it, just a bag by itself and it was fine. Everything in here, which was camera gear, it's all full of camera gear. I put a lot of trust in this bag and it 100% paid off and it made it one of the best bags that I've ever used for daily carry. Um, the only thing that's really redeemable about this bag specifically is the harness system. I had this zipped closed and it's already, it's coming open. I'm barely putting any pressure and it's literally unzipping itself. Um, it's not a bad harness system. Um, I think it's definitely some room for improvement, but uh, these look like they're beefy, a little thin, a little too thin for my personal taste. And this back panel looks like it should have foam and it'd be like kind of rigid. It's not. This very this bag is very flimsy. There is no rigidity. There is no stiffness to it. There is no support to this bag. It is literally just very cheap. It feels like, this material feels like a cheap car seat from like the 90s, right? That's what this material feels like. And the little bit of like, I think it's supposed to be tarpaulin-esque material. This like pleather material feels like something that wanted to be leather and then just gave up and went home halfway through. Nothing 
about this bag feels nice to me. And the thing is, you might be thinking to yourself, well, it doesn't really matter because I'm literally just gonna use it for school. I don't care if it breaks down. And that's totally fine. But if you wanted to spend an extra $100 as compared to buying something that's $50 for something that's gonna last way longer, function a lot better, have better organization, better hardware, better material, better comfort, better straps, better rigidity, better everything, really, I think it's worth it. Because here's the thing about this bag too. This front pocket, right, is like their organization. And I gotta admit, this is pretty cool, right? It's got this little like half thing, you open it up, you got like a front pocket, you got some little things in here. I feel like if I if I did this too hard, and I'm, I'm honestly considering just trying it, um, if I open this too hard, I feel like this is gonna split down the middle and it's gonna disconnect from the bag and this whole thing is just gonna come flying off. That's, that's how cheap this bag feels. Same thing with this top, top pocket up here. It looks like both of these should have a little bit of protection, like a little bit of rigidity, a little bit of something to keep your valuables safe. This material in here, it feels like it's supposed to be for sunglasses, um, but it's very coarse. It's very, it's got texture to it. It's, um, it's very rough. It feels like if I put anything in here, it's gonna get scratched. And it's the same thing. I feel like I could rip it right off if I yanked a little bit too hard. On top of that, there's no protection for anything in here, especially your laptop. If you open this thing, that's not a good sign, by the way. If you can just like rip your bag open like that, not a good sign, in my opinion. Um, it's got it's got this laptop compartment and everything. 15 inch laptop. Um, tablet sleeve is so confusing to me because it barely fits my iPad mini. Um, and it's up off the bag enough to where if you had like a normal, I think it's like regular iPads are like 10.9 inches. Um, it feels like it wouldn't fit it. It feels like nothing except for an iPad mini or a smaller tablet would fit in the tablet sleeve. And I get not everybody has a tablet, but if you're gonna have a tablet sleeve in a bag, you'd wanna make it generic and like broad enough to fit most average tablets. That's my opinion, I might be crazy for that. Um, but the thing is, there's no protection. Your, t your laptop goes in, and luckily I use my fake laptop, or not my fake laptop, but my laptop that doesn't really work anymore when I test these bags out. Um, just a thin piece of fabric between the bottom of the laptop compartment and the concrete. So you put your bag in, you put your laptop in a little bit too, too quick when it's on the ground, you put your bag down a little bit too hard, you might damage your laptop. And that's not a good sign. On top of that, if I was gonna take any kind of tech gear in here, the fact that there is no rigidity, no protection, I just, I, I don't trust a bag that can literally fold down. You see that? It's folded down into itself. I just don't like this bag. Now, again, this is just my personal opinion as someone who reviews a lot of bags, and I know that not everybody shares the same opinion on everything, but I just feel like, again, this is not even worth it. If you're thinking about getting a cheap bag, specifically one from Amazon, and that's why I want to stress that. I know that people can go to Walmart and get like a Jansport, and that Jansport will outlast the nuclear holocaust. I don't know how, and I don't know why, but for some reason they do. I'm saying specifically be careful with brands that sell on Amazon. That's kind of the point that I should have said up at the top. And the reason I said that is because a lot of times brands that sell on Amazon are brands that literally just go underneath like a fake name or just a name that they've created and it's just an Amazon specific brand where they've taken something from another company and copied it for 75% of the cost. Like they just, they literally, they sell it for the, the lowest bottom dollar and undercut the people that did that. And we saw this, Peak Design has a whole video where they have their, their camera uh, sling that Amazon, an Amazon brand, Amazon Basics, I think it was, just took and copied. The same thing happened with Gravel, with their toiletry kit. Another company underneath the Amazon brand created their toiletry kit, but sells it for half the price. And that's where you wanna be careful, is because these look like they should be based off of something, or maybe they are based off of something that you've seen before from another company, but they're literally trash. And honestly, the other thing about that too, and this is a very, specific thing that I, I hold very close to me is that if you buy that knockoff camera sling that they stole from Peak Design or that knockoff toiletry kit that they stole from Wander, there's even one that they stole or the knockoff toiletry kit from Gravel and there's a bag from Wander that's a knockoff on Amazon. If you buy those for 30, 40 bucks and it's basically the same design that another company has put a lot of work and thought and effort into, I would rather buy that bag that might have a steeper price tag to support that company that and get a bag that's also going to last. That's the, that's the big thing. Rather than to support something that basically ripped it off. And that's the thing is Amazon will rip off everybody. Um, that's why they're the biggest corporation probably. I don't know. I don't know much about corporations. I don't know much about big business. I do have a small business. 
um, that's gonna take over Amazon one day. So just, just wait for that. And that's kind of the thing is that a lot of times these Amazon bags are ripoffs of companies that actually want your business, that actually want to give you a product that's gonna last. And instead Amazon or these companies that work under Amazon or sell on Amazon, it could be any of those. I'm not saying it's specifically Amazon. It's also companies that sell on Amazon. They know that they can undercut all these other companies that they've taken these designs from because they change them just slightly. And that's just how it is. Um, and I just don't, I don't agree with that. So if you're looking to get a cheap daily carry bag, um, just be careful of the ones you buy off Amazon. Try to find a brand that's genuine, sincere, has actual bags that are gonna last and not be absolute crap. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong if you are like, well, I don't wanna spend $200 on a daily carry bag. And I think that's totally fine. But just be careful where you decide to get that 50 or $100 bag from, specifically with Amazon. A lot of times I've gotten, I've gotten emails, countless emails from companies that are like, check out this product we want you to review. And I click on it and it's just Amazon. And when I Google that company, nothing pops up except for Amazon. It's a huge red flag for me. Now that camera bag was kind of the same thing. And I was like, you know what? Let me let me do this as, an, as a way to see what this is like, which is why I've started this series. I actually have an Amazon basics travel bag that I'm gonna compare to the Outbreaker from Tortuga because those are very similar. And I feel like there's a lot of design similarities there. I'll be doing that one down the road at some point, but, and that's my point, just be careful, put a little bit of research, Google the company's name. If it's on Amazon, Google it. And if there's an actual website that looks a little bit more legit, look at the reviews on there and see what it's like from there. Don't go off the first thing you see on Amazon. And I understand there are some big companies that sell on Amazon that I like, Wandered, Nomadic, Peak, they all sell on Amazon. There's nothing wrong with selling on Amazon. I'm saying look for the companies that only sell on Amazon. That's usually not a good sign on the quality of the product you're getting. That's all I had to say. Rant over. I thought this was going to be a comparison. It ends up just me being, be careful what you buy. So with all of that, if you could, uh, thank you. All love and support. I appreciate it. Um, like, subscribe, all of that nonsense. And um, I'll see you on the next, the next rant that I go on.